Welcome to Tower Talk Business Radio, where we bring you conversations with the top business minds on Long Island and around the nation every week. Featuring expert consultants and small business owners who have found success, but are also willing to share their top tips, failures, and give gritty, matter-of-fact advice based on their firsthand experience. Now, let's Let's get get down down to business business on on Tower Talk Talk Business Business Radio Radio, on on the the voice of Nassau Community Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hello and welcome to Tower Talk Business Radio, powered by the NASA Community College Foundation. My name is Ray Schwetz, AVP of Business Banking at Jovia Financial Credit Union, along with Denisha Boston Hill, CEO, Keeper of the Brand, Marketing and Digital Agency. We're focused on being the premier resource for business and entrepreneurship. We interview the most important leaders in the industry, and we bring you business tools, tips, advice, and services that help you grow your business. And helping us maximize human resource solutions for growth and success today is Jason Velez of Insperity. Now, Insperity is an employee benefits human resource company providing workforce solutions. Jason, welcome to the show today. Thanks for having me. Uh, We're very excited to have you on. So uh, benefits is something that can be very confusing. So, um, you know, we need you to help kind of sort us out a bit, you know. But first, tell us just a little bit about you. Sure, absolutely. So, um... I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, uh, Brooklyn currently in reside house. in uh, <laughs> Montville Township in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Uh, my office is in White Plains, okay. so I'm all over the place. I do a lot of business on the island as well. Uh, but I have two small children, five, and my son is soon to be two years old. Um, when I'm not spending time with my family, I like to read. The most recent book I read was uh, Winning by Tim Grover, uh, former trainer of Michael Jordan, and... My other hobby is uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which I've been doing now for a little bit over seven years. Wow. Okay. So don't mess with Jason. (laughs) (laughs) And so, how, Jason, how did you land in employee benefits? Sure. So um, came into human capital management from actually kind of a left turn. I was doing sales strategy and operations primarily with sports, entertainment, and technology companies for um, well over a decade. While I was there, I was responsible for hiring, training managing teams, managing a quota, dealing with operations from a day-to-day standpoint and was you know, wearing many hats and spinning a lot of plates at the same time. Um, my last role, uh, essentially, pandemic swallowed the organization. They wound it up folding. So started to take a look back and try to determine what my next step would be. And I really wanted to help other executives and business owners on how to deal with you know, all the things that go into running the day-to-day with a business. I mean, I know it can be overwhelming, it can be challenging, and I'm here to help with that. So that's sort of how I divested to human capital. Natural fit, would you say, Ray? Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And you know what, it's, here's the thing, you get into a business because you're usually getting into business because you're passionate about whatever that business is. So, you know, if you get into personal training, you're getting into personal training because you like working with people and helping them maximize their results and, and to be the best athletic and, and be in the best fit that they could possibly be. Um, you, you're not worrying about running a business and the employee benefits and all that other stuff. So, um, you know, it's good that you kind of step in there and, and fill in that role for them. Yeah. I mean, nobody goes into business and because they want to run payroll or because they, <laughs> they, they want to get into the weeds of benefits and compliance and all those fun aspects of having employees and, and running a business. So, you know, yeah. they come in because they're passionate about a product or a service or, you know, something else in a previous life. And how can they maintain that focus on what they're doing well and at the same time, make sure that they're, you know, they have that well-oiled machine. So, you know. Now, how does Insperity fit into this? Uh, what does Insperity do? So we have a myriad of business solutions, basically, depending upon the size and scale of the organization. You know, we work with businesses from anywhere from, let's say, three to five employees to 5,000 plus. Um, and really, you know, HR as a business strategy really is scalable depending upon where the organization is. You know, small businesses, they don't have much structure. They really just want something to manage some of the transactional stuff from a day-to-day standpoint, make sure that their their I's are dotted, their T's are crossed. And then from there, it's how do we scale? How do we grow? How do we take care of our people? How do we make sure that, you know, we're investing in or organization and that structure so that way they can propel forward. And then from there, it's, it can go on and on. Let's put it that way. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of competition in that space. So what 
what is it exactly that you do that makes you different from you know another uh, payroll provider or um, another provider of employee benefits? What is it? How do you m- differentiate differentiate yourself in that market? Absolutely. Uh, well, I, I would say first and foremost, just from a mindset standpoint. I mean, our chairman and CEO started out as an entrepreneur. Um, early '80s had a few businesses and felt himself just being bogged down with this portion of the business and really saw the need for helping small businesses take care of this portion. So, you know, while we do payroll, we do benefits, we really care about the small business owner and helping them flourish and providing strategy and support to move them as forward as as far and as fast as possible. That's really what's important to us. Um, I'd say, you know, we have, again, a, a lot of different business solutions within this market. I, I'd say nobody really has the, the depth or breadth of services which we can provide when it comes to human capital management. And, you know, just on a personal level, uh, I, I really see myself as an advisor to these businesses within the community. You know, I want to see them grow, you know, granted, you know, while I'm responsible for developing business at the same time, I find myself probably 30 to 40 percent of the time not doing business with somebody just because I don't think it's a right fit for them either due to some of the things that they have going on with the business standpoint or they're not quite ready to to move forward in that aspect. So, you know, really try to work with them and meet them where they are. That's great. And so in um, you have work- workforce acceleration solutions, right? So can you share what that means to a small business owner. Yeah, absolutely. Listening. So our, our workforce acceleration solution is uh, basically tied into the traditional employment space, you know, where you have some semblance of a structure, but you need something to, to manage payroll and provide some support. I, I would say it's, you know, the most robust HR and payroll solution in the marketplace. Um, best of breed from a technology standpoint and also has a really strong learning management system for those small businesses. You know, um, has about 2,700 training videos and we also oh, provide wow. a support team of professionals to help those businesses to use the tools that are in there to allow them to propel forward on top of the payroll and HR. And just to back up a little bit, because, you know, some folks, especially businesses perhaps that haven't been around for a while or are just starting out, they don't really understand, like, what is the scope of human capital management? You know, like, what's involved? So I I personally, I mean, I know a few just from when you go through your benefits, but take us through, like, what it involves. Is it health? Is it medical? Is it payroll? Is it, like, kind of talk about each piece, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, so, I mean, from a from a transactional aspect, you know, every business owner, they need to run payroll. Um, depending upon the size and scope of the business, they'll most likely provide some sort of healthcare benefits to their employees. Uh, insurance services, you know, both from a workers' compensation standpoint, as well as, you know, as they get further down the line, life, disability, additional perks to attract people. And, and those can vary very dramatically. I've seen some organizations where they offer a stipend to do, you know, different things from an entertainment standpoint, so forth. So, you know, that's one part of it. Um, The other part is, you know, making sure that they're in compliance within on a federal level, a state level, a city level. Um, I'll I'll give an example of a conversation I had with uh, one client. Um, They actually let somebody go, and this was a, a remote employee, and the non-disclosure agreement that they signed was for the state of New York instead of the state of California. So essentially, Useless. that document is not <laughs> no, valid <laughs> for, for all intents and purposes. So, you know, it, it's things like that that, you know, you just don't think about when, you know, your goal is to drive the business, to generate revenue, to, to manage your, your pool of clients and, you know, putting out small fires here and there. And then on top of it, you have the ever-changing government regulations and ever-evolving, you know, especially, you know, I think what the last two and a half years have shown us and, you know, how we've had to pivot strategically back and forth. So, you know, those are the things that we really help with. And, you know, we talked on one solution, which is that workforce acceleration. That's like the traditional model. Um, The other one, which I would say is probably um, our most prominent is what we call our workforce optimization. That's our, uh, our co-employment where we actually take on a lot of the employer-related risks 
for that business. They basically piggyback on our economies of scale when it comes to running payroll taxes, the healthcare purchasing power, workers' comp and things like that. So we're managing that portion, dealing with a lot of that, you know, I guess below the line, transactional, foundational aspects of HR. So they really can focus on what do they want to do to move forward from a strategic standpoint. Yeah, something my CEO says all the time too um, at Jovia. He always says, you know, the, the most important thing is the staff. And you mentioned a couple of things. And so this is why I think this um, area of focus of yours is just so important because number one, you're talking about attracting talent and keeping talent. You know, sometimes businesses don't realize, well, you know, our benefits package really ought to be up to snuff, you know, for, to, keep, to keep us competitive. Uh, and, you know, the other part of it is, of course, keeping out of trouble because, uh, you know, you can't be an expert in everything. You know, um, I often will advise business owners, you don't want to be your own bookkeeper. You don't want to be your own, you know, you just don't. It's not what you were set in business to do. And, you know, having a family member do it or something like that, that's not much better, you know, because you're still really not getting out of it. It's it's important to hire an expert in the field and kind of work with someone like that. Um, the other piece that you mentioned, so I'd like to delve a little bit into that is um, how things went with uh, the pandemic, um, how you had to pivot, because obviously how businesses operated changed. Suddenly we went from being a lot of in-person stuff to now working mm-hmm. remotely. So, and I know for us, you know, just from the banking end, I saw so much change. How did you have to change with what your offerings were to kind of uh, accommodate this? I think the biggest thing is the incorporation of remote employees into organizations, you know, I think a, a lot of businesses were, were local or by nature initially, but the pandemic has led to a shift where from a recruiting standpoint, from a training standpoint, you're now bringing in people from all different states. And, and what does that mean to the organization? And A, how do you hold that person accountable? And B, how do you develop that person? You know, you're not yeah. seeing them day to day. You know, in some instances, maybe you lose a little bit of that that tribal learning experience. So how do you make up for that? Yeah. And I think that's one of the key things. Yeah, working without walls is, is so popular these days. And yes. we had to pivot. So it's an opportunity to get the best talent nationally on your team. Correct. But there's a lot of, you know, A lot of competition also and now. A lot of competition, you know? yeah. So it really comes down to that investment in your people as well. You know, you could want to hire the best, but are you willing to take care of those people? Because, I mean, I think another part of the pandemic has shown that, you know, a lot of people have resigned from roles mm-hmm. due to, you know, maybe quality of lifestyle changes that they were looking to make. So how do you accommodate that part as well? You are listening to Tower Talk Business Radio on the voice of NASA Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ray Schwetz, along with Denisha Boston-Hill, and our guest today is Jason Velez of Insperity. So uh, what is the most common misconception about what you do? Because what you do touches so many things, I'm sure people get a lot of it wrong. So let's get that out of their way. Sure. (laughs) Um, I would say two two main misconceptions. Um, One, that we do payroll. Mm Mm-hmm and two, that we do benefits. Now, they're both aspects of our offerings in many instances, but that's not what we do. At our core, we are an HR-first company. Now, we provide tools for employers to take care of their people, which include those aspects, but I'm not a health insurance broker. I'm not an expert. Uh, You know, I I have a general understanding of it. You know, uh, what I would say is enough to be dangerous. At Mm -hmm. the same time, I lean on experts in the field, you know, other healthcare advisors, brokers, um, contacts within our provider networks, you know, to find out answers. Cause again, I'm not an expert when it comes to that. Um, same thing with payroll. You know, we have specialists with that aspect of the business because I, I'm talking to them about managing their risk and productivity when I think about it from a day to day standpoint. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of it has to do with that overall vendor infrastructure, but how does that tie into their old, their, end goals, I should say. And you're not entirely replacing an HR person, right? You're you're just helping them with the solutions to manage. Absolutely. Those in many of instances, the you know, we are supplementing a team that's already in place. You know, whether that's one individual or, you know, I, I've worked with teams that have five, six people from an HR standpoint where we're providing them guidance. We're essentially acting as HR for the HR team. Now, I'm sure you've walked into businesses where 
you um, you look at things and you just go, oh boy, you know they really need us. Um, and you don't have to name names, but if you can give us a situation where you kind of walked in and you went, oh, you know, there's some big mistakes they've made here. You know, we got to we got to get in there and, and dig in deep and, and help them with that. I would say a lot of it just has to do with the mindset. You know, mm-hmm. when when an organization's thinking about HR, if they think about it as strictly a cost. It's a slippery slope, you yeah. know. You know, when you think about, oh, I have to pay for this for my employee and that, and I'm spending X amount of dollars. Yes, it, it is part of the business, but it, it's an investment in your people, which in turn you should receive multiples on if you do it with with care. Yeah, if you do it right. And what would you say some of the common mistakes that you see? Uh, you know, just from your vantage point, what are some of the common mistakes business owners make in this area? Interestingly enough, I've seen it in both ways, um, particularly, you know, we talked a little bit about benefits from a, a contribution strategy. Mm-hmm. I've seen some organizations where they contrib- contribute a, a very small amount on that side, which when they're in a very competitive marketplace for talent can, can be a real detriment to them. Um, coincidentally, um, I've seen other companies where they're very generous with their contribution strategy, which probably has hurt their bottom line when it's all said and done because it's led to employees maybe to be overly covered than what their necessarily their needs would be. Hmm. That's so interesting. Right? Yeah. And so can you share with us, you know, a success story, a business that you really came in and you helped and you actually saw them begin to grow in this in the HR space? Yeah. So the initial impetus was compliance issues when it came to managing their payroll and their taxes. So they were looking for somebody really to just button up that portion of the business. But, you know, while working with them, really started to shift that mindset to what, what can we do better to take care of our employees? Um, and eventually it, it led to us developing a training and development program with them to, you know, transition some people into leadership. Um, and it, what else did they do? They they wanted up actually changing their their benefit strategy a little bit, adding more robust. And the other thing was they added re- retirement plans with a profit share. Hmm. So they they really changed their mindset to shift towards how could they take care of the people that they have at their staff, and uh, you know their their retention rates have improved as well. Yeah, well that's that's the thing. I mean, if you're if they, the employee sees the rewards, then you know they tend to be much more invested in what they're doing. So I'm going to shift gears a little bit, and I'm going to talk about something that I know excites Denisha and, and, and certainly myself. I've been through it. Uh, we've been through. I've been through a rebranding. So um, the name Insperity, um, the branding that uh, is associated with that. How how did the company kind of come up with their name? And do you? Know, I'm not sure if you know everything about that, but. Uh, <laughs> um, I do recall it being a play on words with inspire, and I, I forget, that makes a lot of sense. I forget what the other part is. To be completely candid, yeah, uh, it, it escapes okay. me at the moment. That's fine. That's fine. No, and the reason I ask is just out of curiosity. It does seem the you know trend, trend, trend from the name uh, trend from inspire. Uh, Jovia, you know, is something that came from joy. But it was funny because it's a, a name that didn't necessarily mean anything, and we kind of put the meaning into it. So I find that as I was looking through your marketing materials that um, it was kind of a similar experience in that, you know, there was something, you know, Inspire seemed to be within there. And your marketing materials do a really good job of kind of helping someone really understand better what you do. Because I'll be honest with you, when you and I first met and talked, I had the same misconceptions that I, I guess a lot of folks have. Of course. You know, I was thinking, all right, well, he's somebody who does payroll. You know, let me talk with him and see, you know, what ways we can partner together and work together and help businesses. Um, and you do, you do so much more than that. Um, so how do you collaborate with some of these other companies that, you know, that offer these services that, you know, a business owner is looking to manage through your workforce solutions? Could you clarify that a little? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. So what I'm saying is, that do you partner with other companies, um, like other payroll companies? Do you partner with other um, uh, benefits companies? You know, do you work together with um, you know brokers, Got investments? It, okay. Yes. Um, you know, so payroll is generally a core part of our, our competency. It's sort of, I guess, to use the Jesse. Uh, the Reggie, yeah, Reggie Jackson term, the the straw that serves the drink when it comes to his. Oh, I everything. like that. Uh, 
That being said, I mean, I work with myriad of advisors, um, healthcare benefits, accountants, uh, bankers, yeah. you know, basically people who are working with business professionals just really to uncover like what are they hearing? What kind of challenges are they dealing with? And, you know, because again, it's not just about, you know, the payroll, the HR. It's really about like, what are these? What are these people facing? What are their challenges? Because every business is unique, both from an industry standpoint and from a size standpoint, from where they're looking to go. So um, I really try to keep that network as broad as possible. And I'd say that's actually a large portion of my day outside of you know meeting with business owners is meeting with people within my community that I consider my trusted advisors and going, hey, what are you hearing out there? Yeah. You are listening to Tower Talk Business Radio. Our guest today is Jason Velez of Insperity. Insperity is an employee benefits human resource company providing workforce solutions. My name is Denisha Boston Hill, along with Ray Schwetz on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Now, Jason, what's interesting is that, you know, you you don't provide a lot, some specific, you know, tools, but I'm sure you partner with other major you know, providers of solutions. So I'll just share with everyone that my um, my new favorite tool is Bonusly. So it's a morale tool that you really just, you know, oh. if Ray came up with a great idea today, I'm going to bonus you some points. And then you can secure, you know, gifts and trips and oh, all I these like great that. things, right? So I love that tool. So are there any tools or um that you're working with that really changes in We actually have something called, similar called like culture. that. So it's funny that you mentioned it. Um, oh. uh, ours is tied into uh, Perks at Work, but okay. you could assign points to people, you know, for... Instant gratification exactly. for great hey, work, you did right? a great job. Here's, you know, hey. $100 towards whatever and so forth. And then there's all different types of discount offers. You know, if you want to take the kids to Great Adventure or Splish Splash or, you know, something along those lines, there's a lot of options in there. So Absolutely. And I think that really helps them around. Absolutely. Right? And also, I, I think it adds a, a level of, you know, that you care about that person outside of what they're doing from a day to day where it's, you know, take this and, and do something else. You know, take care of your family, you know. Yeah. You don't take them for granted. Exactly. I see you. On a daily basis. And I so that. I really love it. Yeah, same here. I love that. This is very innovative thinking. And, and uh, what a great way to recognize people. I mean, you know, because it's one thing to have an employee of the month or a special parking place. or But nowadays, as the marketplace, the job market is changing, you know, maybe a, a parking place is not that beneficial, you know, especially if you're working remotely. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then, you know, uh, I think a lot of the traditional thing was, oh, after hours, happy hour. But what if you have a remote staff? How yeah. do you accommodate those people? I mean, I, I've seen virtual happy hours. I've seen gift cards given. Well, one company I thought was really cool where they, they gave each person a stipend, but they had to use it on an activity with a coworker. Nice. So, oh, so then like you have to that. think about like, okay, what does this person want to do? Maybe they're a Zach Brown band fan. Let's go to a concert. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty that's fantastic. Cool, right? Great yeah. way to, to build that yeah. continuity with the team as well and really develop that culture. Now, without giving any way any industry secrets, um, are there any things kind of on the horizon are for you and for Insperity that are you're developing that um, might be new to the marketplace or or might just be an enhancement of a current offering that you have? What what what's coming up next for you and so the company? I know we touched on the workforce acceleration, and yes. that's something that's really become a a core part of our mission to help companies with traditional employment solutions. So they are continually developing that technology and, and adding additional solutions to those businesses and to sort of mirror a lot of the things that we handle on the co-employment or PEO's side with our workforce optimization. So that's our plan over the next five years to really build out that portion of the business. Gotcha. You do a lot of, uh, of networking. Um, I and that's how we met, of course. And um, I know you said that you look to partner with business advisors. When you're out at a networking event, who is it that you are looking to meet? Um, and and how do you do that now with how things have changed? Well, I'm a member of a uh, BNI regional group. It's called BNI Epic Connections. We meet uh, Wednesday mornings like at, the name. at 7 a.m. Yeah. Cool name. Thank you. Ha hashtag yeah. BNI Epic Business Connections. I always forget that one. Um, but yeah, so, you know, 
I'd say we're now at about 23 uh, members in total. Again, we meet every week and you know talk about the challenges that we're facing. Obviously, I do a, a lot of things within the community, which yes, as well. We share um, a passion there for sure. Absolutely. Um, f- fundraising. I'm actually in November doing uh, a fundraiser for Tap Cancer Out. Um, basically, it's like a 5K, but instead I'll be practicing jujitsu to, to raise money. Um, that'll be, I believe it's in uh, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia area. So oh, wow, I'll be nice. doing that. Again, just try to keep my, my boots to the ground. Again, I, I love working with people who are in the community, dealing with small and mid-sized companies. Again, CPAs. Uh, I, I do a lot of work with uh, fractional CXOs, CFOs, people like that. Um, really just trusted advisors to those businesses, the bankers, the, the healthcare benefits advisors too. Again, not, I'm not an expert, so a lot of times I'll lean on them as well. Um, and always looking to continue to grow that part of my network. And you're part of that team. Um, and as we're coming up to a close, what's like the one thing that you want to make sure that uh, you leave our, our listener with? What's the one piece of advice or the one thought that you'd like to make sure that they, they get across from our conversation? <sighs> and I know that's a tough one. I remember I was reading a quote, and, and I'm paraphrasing here, but uh, I, I think Richard Branson's, said it best. Wow. When starting a business and when running a business, um, your customers are second. Your employees are first. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. And you know what? It's, uh, I, again, I, I'll mention my CEO. I'll give him props there. Uh, is that, you know, with um, with Jovia, we, we constantly focus on the employee because at the end of the day, the employee is who represents your company. And if the employee is not happy and not really believing in what they do, you know, it's very hard for them to create a happy customer, right? Agreed. So, so that's that's very important. And um, what is the best way for us to find you and to find Insperity? It could be reached by phone, uh, 914-539-3223, or also by email, it's jason.velez at insperity.com. Excellent. All right, well, Jason, thank you so much. We really appreciate you joining us today appreciate you having me. and helping us kind of hash out that world, that confusing world of employee benefits and uh, capital management, uh, human capital management, pardon me. Um, we'd like to leave you with a little bit of Denisha's philosophy, DB's philosophy. Today's DB philosophy, today is sacred, for it would never come again. John Bruna. So we want to thank you for being with us. My name is Ray Schwetz, along with Denisha Boston Hill, your co-host and producers. This is an NCC Foundation production. Visit nccradio.org for more information. We're available on Odyssey, TuneIn, iHeartRadio as a podcast in iTunes, Android Podcasts, and Spreaker. This has been Tower Talk Business Radio, powered by the Nass Community College Foundation on the voice of Nass Community College 90.3 WHPC.